I would say to countries like you, um, whose independence and democracy uh, was very hard won and has been very short-lived, why on earth, why on earth would you give all of that up? It certainly doesn't make sense to me. And why is all this happening? Well, there is, of course, behind the European project, a line of thinking. And the line of thinking was that the way to stop war was to bind peoples together, to bind them together economically, to bind them together with one government, one flag, one anthem, and one, and one police force. That was the idea. Give people a single state, give them a new identity, a European identity, as opposed to a French and a German one, and it would be peace and prosperity forever. <clears throat> you yourselves uh, perhaps went through a similar kind of experiment after the First World War with the creation of Yugoslavia. You know, much of the thinking with the creation of the European Union was similar to that thinking back then. And the real common denominator now, both in EU member states and in aspirant member states like this, is there is a divide. And the divide is between ordinary people who work, pay their taxes and bring up their families, and the professional political class. You know, when the Swiss had a referendum on whether they should join the European economic area, 78% of them said no. And yet the Swiss foreign minister said the following week that despite that, he would still be in negotiations with the EU. The Norwegians have twice emphatically rejected membership of the Union, uh, but still a majority in the Norwegian parliament would want to join. <clears throat> and just think, if you're a Croatian professional career politician, if you're a Croatian civil servant, just think what European Union membership means to you. Well, I'll tell you what it means. It means riches beyond the dreams of avarice. And I have seen this in country after country after country. The really clever thing, the really corrupt thing, about this European Union is they buy their opponents with money. So there'll be 12 Croatians, if you join the European Union, who will go to the European Parliament, and rather than earning uh, the current salary, which I understand is about 2,000 euros a month in the Croatian Parliament, they'll be on 7,500 euros a month. But that is peanuts. That is peanuts compared with the bureaucrats and civil servants. They will hit the jackpot. Many of your bureaucrats in Zagreb will go to Brussels and will be earning between 12 and 15,000 euros a month. That is just how corrupting this entire union is. Say to a country like you um, that have enjoyed your own form of democracy, and you may be critical of your own parliament and government, but at least you have the ability in elections to remove them and replace them with somebody else. If the people of Croatia want to join the European Union, that's fine. But for goodness sake, please, all of you that are Democrats, whether you believe this is the right thing or whether you believe that this is the wrong thing, make sure that before it happens, you have a full, free and fair debate. Make sure that the yes side and the no side in any campaign have spending limits so that we don't see abominations such as we saw in Malta. Well, when Malta joined the EU, the yes side outspent the no side by a factor of about 50 to 1. By all means, have your referendum next year, but I urge that you have a proper, free, frank debate and that it's conducted equally and fairly for both sides. Thank you very much.
with institutions, they cannot, by definition, be giving you useful information. Because it is their interest, isn't it, to tell the world what a wonderful thing this is. And this is just happened in every single African country. The so-called information campaign is all one-sided traffic. It's all one-sided traffic by a vested political class who will make even more money themselves if you join. So I'm very suspicious. Can I just say, sir, love the t-shirt. I've got several like it at home. Uh, the, uh, I just want to say, you know, I, I, I've seen it make attention to people here in Zagreb over the last couple of days. And one thing I want to say to all of you uh, who, who uh, may well be looking to vote no when this referendum comes about, I shall tell you back up on this, as a veteran of these campaigns, it is very, very important that all the different groups be they left wing or right wing, whatever differences they may have on, 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 on other areas of politics, it is absolutely <laughs> vital that over the next month or two, these different groups of people start getting together and start trying to plan a no campaign. You know, even though you're taking on all the falsehoods and all the money on the other side, a well organised small no campaign with some implementary friends from outside can achieve remarkable things. So it's very, very important that you start turning your minds in, in, in terms of making that a formal no Dan, can I do it? 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 Kašmarek iz pokreta građanska solidarnost prvo bi rekao na jedno najvažnije pitanje nije odgovoreno znači mi smo okupirani evropskim zastavama, to su okupatorske zastave i nismo dobili odgovor zbog čega su još uvijek tu, to je prvo drugo me zanima kako je moguće da Sabor nema prijevod Lisabonskog sporazuma a po njemu nas vjerojatno gore u Evropu i treće, znači organiziramo skupove na trgu Bana Josipa Jelačića svaki utorak i zatražili smo gradskog poglavarstva dozvolu da imamo pravo postaviti binu, razlaz, transparentne i takve stvari. Kako je moguće u demokratskoj državi da nam grad to zabrani? Da mi sad jednostavno moramo binu držat, nosit ljude okolo, jel? I ne možemo drugačije binu stavit, da razlaz moramo nosit i to mi sve jednostavno nema veze s demokracijom. Zahvaljujem. Zahvaljujem. A molim odgovor za zastave svaka. Evo, gospodin Plenković, molim vas, zastave. Riječ je o pitanju koje se postavilo nakon što je Hrvatska stekla status kandidata. Kao što se sjećate, to je bilo 18. lipnja 2004. godine, a propos za vrijeme Irskoga predsjedavanja Europskom unijom. I riječ je bila o jednoj odluci da se u Hrvatskoj javnosti emancipira Europska ideja. Nije ništa neobičajanje u drugim državama da uz nacionalne simbole, dakle uz zastavu i grb nacionalni, postoje i zastave Europske unije, prema tome na crti strateškog određenja Republike Hrvatske i vlade i sabora takvo izlaganje zastave Europske unije nije neobičajeno u drugim državama. Mi se nismo u ratu borili pod Europskom zastavom, nego pod Hrvatskom, a Evropa nam je napravila embargo na oružje da se ne možemo naoružavati. Pa mi nije jasno zašto bi ja ima tu zastavu u svojoj domovini. Preciznije pitanje, ko je zastava osnova na svojim domovima? Zastava osnova, strana zastava. Joško Joras je bio kada se ne bi bio teoristi zastave. Dobro, ovo se sada. Ovo je petakvi. Preciznije da vratim se osnova, mi se dobro ne znači.
time zone, we want to train together, cooperate together, be friends with each other. We do not want undemocratic rule through those institutions and an appalling flag all over our current cities. I hate that flag. I want to see it removed from the Thank you. 